you know, you know from common experience, if you put a nozzle on the hose, you can shoot the water out farther. Um, you know, so it's going to go faster. Uh, so let's just say it will go faster. Right? And then now it gets greedy. It says we're supposed to calculate the speed that it goes out. Well, an easy way to see this or to see why it's got to go faster is if you imagine in the big garden hose here, the, there's, a, there's like a chunk of water, and I'm just drawing, I'm picking out a particular chunk. So here's a chunk of water, and, and that thing moves along. So say that, that chunk of water, like, whoosh, it flows out. That same chunk of water, when it gets over here, is going to be lo like longer Right, so I'm, I'm just drawing in, maybe it's gonna be this long. So that chunk will look like that by the time it gets over there. Well, that's an easy way to see why it's gotta be going faster, um, right? Because as this thing flows from here to here, this thing would have to flow from there to there. So that's, that's really faster. What's at play here is we're really just saying that the volumes of these two things are the same. Well, so an easy way to get there is you can say, well, if this is like volume one here on the left, and this is volume two here on the right, um, right? What you can do is you can think about it, well, if a certain volume of water flows by in one second here, that same volume needs to flow by over here. So what you can do is you can say vol per time, like one on the left, equals the volume per time on the right. Well, we saw in the previous case, previous example that the way you find the volume per time is you take the area times the velocity. So area one times velocity one. So let's give this thing an area. The, the, the side of this thing has like a cross-sectional area. And so does this. There's area two. Well, so area one times velocity one has to be equal then to area two times velocity two. So this is a nice way, very, very, very useful thing um, that lets you see that if you make a smaller area like in a nozzle that the speed will go up so the smaller this is the bigger this has to be to compensate right now the reason this works is all this is saying is that you didn't lose any water whatever volume per time is flowing by here that same volume per time needs to flow by there so the only real physics principle we use to come up with this is we're basically saying you didn't lose any water or gain any water um, you're not and you can't I guess thirdly you can't squeeze the water the water's not like any more dense um, so that's it. Now, a way to get this, so now, now let's go ahead and get the speed that it comes out. One way to get it is you could literally calculate, okay, like pi r squared for that area and plug in the five here. And then you could go, well, on this side, I'll do pi r squared for that. And then, you know, and then calculate the new speed. An easier way to get it though, is to notice that the radius went down by a factor of two. So just a little, this is more how a college kid would solve the problem, is you'd say radius uh, decreases uh, by factor of two. What do I mean by that? Well, it used to be 1.2, now it's only 0.6. So the radius went down by factor two. Now that means the area decreases by a factor of four. So the area is four times smaller, right? Well, if the area is four times smaller, then you, what you can do is you can say, well, therefore, V increases by a factor of four. So all we have to do is multiply by four. So the old, the old speed was five, and so then what you can do is you can just say, well, five meter per second times four equals 20 meter per second. Okay, so you could have come up with this by like literally plugging in pi r one squared here and five, and then you could do pi r two squared here and, and then leave this as an unknown and solve, and you'll get 20. But this is just faster to go, hey, I cut the, the radius by factor two, so I cut the area by factor four, so the speed then has to go up by factor four. So very, very easy. Um, now this says, so to see what I mean or why, why that's a powerful approach, is you can do things like, okay, what would you use for the radius if you wanted the water to come out nine times as fast? 
right? Well, so again, you can look at it like this. A1, B1 is A2, B2. Well, so if you want to be, if you want this to be nine times bigger, uh, an easy point with this is you can say the area must be nine times smaller. Um, and so then if we want the area to be nine times smaller, in order to make that happen, you want the radius to be three times smaller. Okay, so if the radius goes down by a factor of three, well then you can just say, well, okay, well my original radius was 1.2. So, you know, so I'll say like therefore we can say 1.2 centimeters divided by three and then you'll, so you want the new radius to be 0 0.4 centimeters. Oh, so that's just a nice quick way, it's just a nice quick way to do it. Um, final one here, it says, now if you want the, um, the water to exit at 10 meters per second, uh, a fast way to think about this, again, you could just literally plug numbers into the formula, but it's just faster if you think, well, the speed so we're twice as fast, so we're 2x as fast. So therefore, we've got to have, what, half the area? Uh, so we need a two times smaller area. And that means the radius needs to be root two times smaller. Square root of two times smaller radius. And so the way to make something smaller by factor root 2 is you write it divide by root 2. So the old radius was 1.2 centimeters. So you can say 1.2. But then we would need to divide that guy by um, root 2. And so let's see what that comes out to be. So we get um, 1.2. Whoops, I messed up. 1.2 and then divided by um, the square root of 2. 2 to the 0.5. Uh, enter. So it looks like 0.85-ish, um, 0.85 uh, centimeters. So if you if you shrunk the radius by that much, it would come up twice as fast. You'd you reduce the radius by root two, and that reduces the area by two, which makes it come up twice as fast. Oops, let me move the camera down so you could actually see the last line there. Um, 1.2 divided by root 2 is 0.85.